When I was a missionary in South America, 19 years old, memorizing all those charlas or discussions was a requirement. Though sometimes I would stop and ask the people questions just to see if they were paying attention. How well do you pay attention? When my dad was a missionary, he used flannel boards with cut-out figures. I had a slide projector and a cassette recording device, and when it was ch time to change the slide, there would be a loud beep from the machine, and I would dutifully turn the knob. Well, now times have changed, and now with electronics and raising the bar with better missionaries, we can show videos, and have those missionaries teach gospel principles in a spiritual conversion form, paying more attention to the people we're instructing. Paying attention is more important than maybe we're thinking about. And now this method is going to help us pay more attention by providing real personal connections and spiritual testimony bearing. I really love that the church is emphasizing this concept now in our Sunday classroom studies. However, it seems to me that changing the way a person has communicated for the majority of their life is a very difficult task. Really, people don't change that easily, especially if all they've ever done is read out of a lesson manual or pass the book around for others to read. Old habits die hard. I know a friend of mine was in one of these Teaching the Savior's Way classes on a Sunday, patiently listening to the instructor read out of the manual for a long length of time. And when the teacher was finished, he looked up and asked all the participants a question. Well, my friend raised his hand and gave his answer, to which the group facilitator abruptly turned to him and shouted, No! You're wrong! Now Hebrews in the Bible says that we must pay attention lest we forget. Now I confess, you know, this is a little bit kind of ironic and funny to me that this would happen in this kind of a class. He's a good man with a good testimony and I don't even feel the slightest like criticizing him. But he can't break out of his lifetime approach to teaching even if it was teaching the class on how to stop that kind of teaching. Look, I believe everybody can change, okay? They can repent with the Spirit. But I think some skills have to be acquired or practiced, or some things have to stop the way they've been going on. It's, it's not that easy to get people to pay attention. Look. I don't claim to be the best teacher in the world, but I did have a father who was a professor in speech pathology, and he taught me at a very young age to speak out from the pulpit with minimal amount of notes and, and just share my feelings and thoughts from the heart, from the spirit, rather, rather than just read a talk. Eventually, I learned to facilitate a group of people, individuals, each one of them, instead of playing whack-a-mole game like many teachers do, what's on your mind, I don't know. I really believe an LDS class of learning is genuinely successful when he that preacheth and he that receiveth understand one another and both are edified by the Spirit and rejoice together. We've got to not only pay attention to each other but pay attention to the Spirit which will guide us in our discussions. We don't have to depend on things that are written down. We can let the Holy Spirit guide. Every human being is distinct, different. Every testimony although it is different, can combine together with the Holy Spirit and make something greater where two or three are gathered in my name. There Jesus is in the midst of them. And we can get rid of all the clutter 
that is distracting us. And we can focus on things that are spiritual. And we can implement this wonderful teaching the Savior's way approach with more attention, more training, maybe some more patience, and eventually more trusting in the Holy Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ.